Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I'm Jane Marks Hastig and I'm a green glass artist, which means I take glass that is would be, thro would be thrown away and turn it into beautiful art. The glass I'm using in this project is tempered safety glass. We have a glass shop and um, this is a type of glass that can't be recycled. So we throw a lot of it away. And this type of glass would be in certain windows or tabletops or side glasses of a car. And it pebbles into um, small, little, easy to handle, safe little pebbles of glass. And it's really pretty when the, when the light hits it. And I just was throwing so much of it away, I thought there has to be something we can do with it. So I found a way to paint it. And that's what I'm using on this glass on glass mosaic. And it's not a traditional mosaic. I use, use a lot of open negative space um, to let the light through, but it's really um, a cool medium because uh, of the transparency of the glass. You can work on both sides. You can add a lot of depth. And this is a, uh, this project is called Broken Arted. And the concept is that sometimes you have to break your heart a little to get the good stuff out. So it's a work in progress, but I'm just starting it today. And the glue I use cures up with sunlight, which is kind of fun to use another natural element. And it's great because it takes a long time for it to cure. Uh, the nice thing about this glue is I can move it around and move it around and it won't cure until it's exposed to UV light. If I don't like something, then I can just move it around. And this forms a really strong bond. Now that I've gotten it here, I've covered up all the glue I have, I would take this now and go set it outside and let that cure up so that the next stage has something to push back against. And then I'll move on to the next piece. When you cut tempered, it wouldn't cut in a straight line, it would break into a million little pieces. So when we get pieces that are measured wrong or are taken out of a house or something, we can't cut them down for something else. And I was moving a piece out in our shop and it broke into a million pieces and I was sort of heartbroken because I was trying to save this piece and that was in a million pieces. I went to get a broom to clean it up and the sun was just coming in on it and it just sparkles off all these cool little edges and was so pretty. I thought I've got to start trying to do something with it. One of the beauties is, is I have not had to go and buy any colored glass and there's a lot of beautiful colored glass out there but so far um, I've been able to just use what I found and I found a way to color it and get all these really great colors but it's something that I invented so I don't really want to share that yet because um, it's still kind of new and I kind of want to keep that keep some secrets to myself. <laughs> this is an example of pieces that didn't temper well um, and they're not supposed to they're not supposed to break this way. This would be actually dangerous coming at you if you were in an accident and this was from the back glass and that's what it would be from. You can see the little lines in there are from heat grids. But they're really cool for my purposes because they're still safe to handle. Um, and I could paint them or even use them as is and they could be icicles or they could be blades of grass or part of a flower. So I have been able to find a lot of really neat things in the broken glass. What I'm gonna do is cover the entire thing um, with red because that's what she had asked for but it's going to wind up looking like this and this was an old wine bottle that we cut and it's really nice and heavy you can use it for a vase or candle holder or whatnot so this is a sandpaper specifically for glass it's something we would use to smooth the edges of glass um, but what i will do is take it and scratch it up and it's fine to scratch it up because we're not going to see that through the glass if i was doing something more clear i wouldn't want to do that which is why on the big projects i like to use that uv glue um, but since this is so rounded, it would be impossible to, to get that to adhere. So I scuff it up just to give it the glue something to bite against. And you have to be careful you don't get the glass too hot while you're doing this, because it can crack. So you gotta be a little careful. And when I've got it good and scuffed, I just kind of get a, a nice swipe just to make sure that it's not too dusty. Make sure I've got enough glue here. And it's good to let this sit a little bit so it gets a little bit tacky. And it's always tricky working with something round. It will move away on you. Oh. And this I have to work pretty quickly. So I usually do a small amount at a time. And it's great when I can do a project that's using the same kind of glass because then I can pretty quickly move through, quickly move through. And often I will try to put a lot of clear glass in because the clear glass really shows light through. If this were gonna be a candle holder, I would do that. You can see it bends down a little bit here. What I thought I would do is on this part, take a, a new piece, a new color of glass 
and do a stripe of that and just sort of play with the natural break that it has. And then this is the, the part that requires patience, that elusive patience that I never used to have. This will take actually a long time. And so I will sit and hold this. It's actually a good project while I'm watching TV or doing something like that. Um, and it's really nice and relaxing, but it'll take a long time to finish this. This project will probably, I'll do it in several stages, and it will probably take a couple weeks to get it completely done because then when I'm finished, I will put a coating on it. But it'll turn out looking something like this one. And this was one of my first pieces that I did, and I loved it because I didn't paint any of this glass. This was all glass from a window, and you can see some of the bluer green. That was actually tinted in the glass, so it came that way. When I first discovered this and then decided I could paint it, I wasn't thinking that I would use it as an artist at all, but I thought artists might use it. So I just started to come up with ideas and I researched mosaics and I thought maybe somebody, but how will I market it? Because that's where I come from is more of a marketing background. And I thought, well, I should see if it'll stick to something. So I used the guys at the shop, what kind of glue would you use? How would you do this? And I found these three old frames that a clockmaker had left at our shop and never picked up and he's since passed away. So they were gonna throw those away. And I just started doing a tree. And I made this tree and it actually looked really cool. And then I had some colors that looked like leaves and put them on there and it was like a whole new world opened up. Once I started covering things with glass, I wanted to see what else I could cover. And I had these shoes that I loved, but they were so painful, I couldn't wear them. I wore them once, but they were beautiful. So I thought, maybe I can cover these with glass. And they turned out so cool, and they've been so popular. Now people are wanting me to do them, and they want them in their size so they can wear them, which would be really hard to do. But they're really pretty. I've had someone use them as like little bookends, or you know, I have one on my desk for a key caddy. And it's just a unique thing. I didn't have to throw the shoe away. and. It was too painful, nobody else would wear it either. But it's pretty and um, people seem to really like it. This was a unique piece that I did because in the other pieces I use a lot of negative space, a lot of open space, and this I actually filled in with glass and then used a glue um, to cover it and fill in the little pieces. So it looks a little bit more like a traditional um, mosaic. And these are irises, they're my mom's favorite flower. And I actually made this for her. And one of the fun things about doing the pieces is having cute little names. I'm trying to get them to move back here from Florida. So this piece I'm gonna give to her when they do and it's called, I wish you were here. <laughs> it's corny, but it's my favorite part. <laughs> this is just a really cool way to show the um, wine bottle rolling pins that I make. They're really, really pretty. It's a non-traditional rolling pin. And it's something that you could put in your window um, to show it off and I can do all kinds of colors. This piece I'm actually trying to um, experiment with different backgrounds. A lot of times I'll just have it clear in the back because someone could put it in a window and you, it's neat to see that reflection through. But sometimes somebody wants to put it on a wall and so this was actually um, some old sheet music that I just sort of ripped up and that's on the back piece of glass. And I just thought it was really fun. And these are actually little glass beads from a beaded necklace that I had that I didn't love anymore. So I just cut it up and made little apples and it was one of my favorite pieces too. This was um, the pine tree piece and it's actually, there's glass on both sides. I didn't enclose this one in, so you can touch it. It's very, it has a lot of cool texture. And these are just, I call it my tr the trees in my yard collection, so just look out and I get to live in such a cool place. So it's really fun to be able to honor that. Nobody's done anything like this. And I love finding objects that I don't really want to throw away, but I, I re-dazzle them, I guess, with glass. <laughs> If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.